Today is the day we could find out what will happen to APS Superintendent Winston Brooks. Yeah, the school board is set to have another private meeting about him starting about 7.30 this morning. The agenda says the board is expected to talk about Brooks's performance, actions, and contract. Now, remember on Monday, the board had another closed-door meeting that went for five hours, but wouldn't say exactly what went on. We do know board president Annalie Maestas has hired a private attorney to look into a, quote, serious personnel issue. She will not say anything more about that. But we have learned it involves Winston Brooks' wife. He called 911 last November after the couple got into an argument at their home in Cedar Crest. During the call, he said she was upset and that things got physical. This all happened after Brooks was suspended for tweets he made about Education Secretary designate Hannah Scandera. We'll let you know what we learn today. Well, the head of a group of charter schools in Albuquerque is off the job this morning after he resigned in the middle of some big investigations. Scott Glassroot was the head administrator of the Southwest Learning Center in Sam's Academy and at the Center of State and Federal Investigations. The governing councils for the public charter schools met privately for three hours yesterday and unanimously approved Mr. Glassroot's resignation. We first told you how Glassroot was put on leave last week after a state audit was released. It showed his schools paid more than a million dollars in taxpayer money over six years to rent planes from a company he owns. The FBI has also confirmed it is investigating the schools. Sources tell us the federal investigation centers on allegations of fraud and embezzlement involving state and federal money. A teenage boy who was murdered, uh, or murdered, I should say, his adopted mother now knows his sentence. Tony Day will stay behind bars until he is 21 years old. The victim's family says that's just not enough. In court yesterday, Tony Day's adoptive family revealed the painful memories and relive the painful memories of the November 2012 day when Tony, who was 14 at the time, shot and killed the woman who adopted him and killed her daughter. The Day family had just taken the mentally disturbed boy into their Tucum Carey family a few years earlier. Mr. Day, do you admit that you killed C. Day and Sherry Holtz? I admit I did. The family was angry that day, that day was not sentenced as an adult. Day will spend about five years in a maximum security facility at CYFD. State police say a 17-year-old boy who was shot and wounded by a Sandoval County Sheriff deputy in Algodones had been drinking. Investigators say the teen pointed a high-powered rifle at some people last Thursday. Deputies arrived and tried to get him to drop his weapon, but they say he pointed the rifle at deputies instead. That is when Deputy Jacob Hopkins opened fire, hitting the teen twice. The boy continues to recover at UNM Hospital. His name has not been released. Well, 534 now. It's going to get even more expensive if you're caught texting and driving in Santa Fe. City Council there has voted to double the $100 fine for texting or posting on the Internet while behind the wheel. So now it's $200. If you're caught in a school zone, the fine is 300 bucks. This is obviously a lot more than the state's fines. Just 25 bucks for the first time you're caught texting and driving. The new rules in Santa Fe start on the 25th of this month. Well, the city of Rio Rancho will be keeping its red light cameras and speed bands. This week, city manager told counselors he plans to extend the city's contract with Red Flex, the company that runs the program. The contract gives the city manager the power to approve two one-year extensions. Some counselors have been divided about these cameras. One counselor, Chuck Wilkins, says the program has reduced the number of crashes and made money for the city. But another counselor, Shelby Smith, a former police officer, says the cost to taxpayers is not worth it. The contract with Red Flex was set to expire in December. Another case of the plague has been reported near New Mexico. Health officials in the San Juan Basin in Colorado have confirmed a resident in western La Plata County was infected with the bubonic plague. They say the person got it from infected prairie dog fleas. Bubonic plague symptoms begin two to six days after the bite of an infected flea or contact with an infected rodent or animal. Symptoms typically include sudden fever, headache, chills, weakness, and painful swollen lymph nodes. Albuquerque city officials say their city pool saw record attendance this summer and record revenue this last year. In fact, it's so good the city is making good on a big public pool master plan to build more pools and fix up some of the older ones. More than half a million people went to city pools last year, the most popular being here at the West Mesa Aquatic Center. Now the city's working on improving all the pools, including putting in new water slides at the Eisenhower Pool 
and improving wading pools for kids all around town. City is also remodeling the Sunport Pool and upgrading the Valley Pool. And in the next few years, the city hopes to start on rebuilding the Los Altos Pool, also designing a new pool for the North Domingo Baca Dog Park. I think the next two to four years we'll have the plans done and have a better idea of what we need to allocate to get that facility constructed. Part of what may very well be helping people get to the pools is the price. The city has not raised the prices since 1998. They're just a couple of bucks and says there are no plans to change that anytime soon. A kitten that gained a lot of attention after being thrown from a moving vehicle is now ready for adoption. We told you about eight week old Sam last month. Remember? Cute little kitten. The kitten was injured after being hurled from a moving truck and ended up hitting a brick wall last month. Sam had to have his left leg amputated. He's doing so well, though, now that the Bosque Animal Clinic is taking adoption applications. Now, that is going to happen starting today. The clinic will review those applications next week and look into doing some home visits before deciding who gets to keep Sam. We have the adoption information online at our website, krqe.com.